I, I was wondering if any of you could uh, elaborate a little bit more about this concept that Professor Jajczak already mentioned, this concept of non-incremental research, which I think uh, is kind of a pillar of the URC granting philosophy that is probably not very well known uh, among you know, potential uh, applicants. And I think it's also important because it appears to me uh, to some extent counterintuitive because I would say that in many branches of sciences, I mean, science really progresses humanity. And also, referring to what you know, presented, you said that you lived with that idea for years before actually submitting a, a proposal. So there was a tremendous process to some extent, but I guess that in the meantime, you, your research, you, you, you mentioned those pilot projects. So they were like seeds anticipating your, your big, big grants. So, you know, I, I, I had kind of difficulty in understanding this non-incrementality. And I remember in uh, another uh, training that we had in Warsaw, actually that was stressed as the, as the real uh, 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 foundational element of the EOSC philosophy. Yes, this is certainly an important question. And, the, and, and let me first say that I very much agree with you that incremental research is an important component of the development of science. At any one point, in any field of science, we are pursuing lines of research. And there are things that need to be done. Right? It's like, uh, you know, we, we, we are in an exploratory uh, search. So we need to fill all the holes that need to be filled. And, and, the, and it's also true that uh, uh, new ideas do not happen out of the blue. They always connect to pre-existing knowledge. But sometimes someone comes and puts together things that have not been put together before. And this creates a new perspective into doing things. And then the, 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 a new branching appears, a new territory of branches and sub-branches and things that need to be filled appear in the map. Right? And so I would associate groundbreaking research with uh, branch opening. And I would associate incremental research with uh, branch filling. Both important aspects. And the something I mentioned earlier in my presentation. It is not that we can make a very clear distinction between the two. Here is incremental, here is groundbreaking. To some extent, the confines between the two are gray, and it is a matter of assessment. But it's a principle. We can think of these two as two different aspects of research production. Yeah, we'd like to add uh, something. Well, I, I think there is a uh, Of course, uh, we have a cumulative noise. But at a certain point, we add, add a different point of view for that, or we mix with other things. And then, and then once this uh, rises to being new, which has never been done before, I guess, it's a beautiful thing. Well, I, I could agree with this. Thank you, Ed, uh, for from uh, Warsaw University. Um, so, just one question for Professor Arellano, one question for Michal. Um, just in trying to understand really the, the, the scores that Poland gets in all these applications, what kind of explanations uh, would you uh, uh, propose? I mean, is it really the, the quality of the proposals people present or are there institutional constraints? I mean, what kind of explanations can we uh, really get uh, from uh, the institution? And then uh, on me, how, uh, congratulations, really, you, I mean, your presentation is really good. I could see the confidence in, in, in what you were presenting. So I would like to ask you, uh, how much, uh, of what kind of encouragement did you find in uh, specifically methodology to use technology 
or to, uh, to use technological methodologies to make the proposal much more interesting or appealing. Yeah, thank you. I suppose there is no single reason to you for, for which uh, we have had uh, so many proposals coming from Poland that were not successful. It's always complex. But the, 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 the obvious answer is that the proposals that have been received are not uh, the proposals with the characteristics, with the type of ambition that is required for the ERC draft. It's kind of an ontological answer. Right? Why, why is this so? And then there is the complexity. Let me, let me not try to elaborate on all the possible aspects, but uh, mention aspirations and reflect maybe a little of my own experience. As uh, many years ago, as a PhD researcher in the UK, we uh, when I started uh, to do is the research work. Uh, probably I was not very much aware of uh, what uh, frontier research was about. I have not had a relation for this. But at, at, at one point, I sort of realized, oh, I see, so it is this that it is required. And then when you see it is this that it is required, it can be. I can also do this. Maybe it's a lot of work. Actually, it's, it's, it's a hell of work. But, 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 but you know what it takes to understand what, 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 what it is. And then you can decide, uh, do I want to do this? So it, it, it is an understanding of uh, what goes with, with that kind of research. And, 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 and and that understanding requires an environment. It's not something that we discover in isolation. It's the result of interactions, of role models, of uh, researchers around you that uh, provide uh, examples. And, uh, and, and this, uh, this, this environment is conducive to those uh, uh, aspirations are difficult to, to build. But not impossible. And it is not a question of how well, you either have it or not have it. It's incremental. Right? You either have it to a greater extent or to a lesser extent. And the more you have it, the easier it is to navigate that uh, path. Uh, I would like to just add two um, interpretations of the question. Uh, first, observations that we have uh, after three years of uh, helping you in the <coughs> observation, because the discussion why, what are the reasons of low numbers of laureates in Poland uh, has been continued since, I don't know, since the mid of the f uh, uh, seven framework program when for the first time we had the ERC scheme. Uh, but the two observation are, um, uh, observations are uh, that, um, first of all, I think that, especially in humanities and social sciences, there is still a lack of awareness what ERC expects. So uh, there is no uh, understanding what high gain, high risk means. Um, and here I would like to actually mention one anecdote which was said by uh, an expert from the Oxford University who came to us for a training. Uh, Jill Wells, um, uh, an expert who helped with grants since, um, I don't know, for at least uh, 10, maybe 20 years. Uh, when, she tried to, uh, when she tried to explain what ERC concept means, she said, well, look, it's a simply glass of wine science. Glass of wine science? Yes, because you researchers, when you come home, uh, when you think about your next five years of work, Usually you have like quite incremental ideas, like you will do that, which is continuation of your previous work, and so on and so forth. But then somebody pours you a glass of wine, 
and then your ideas start, beca start becoming a little bit wider and a, a, of a bigger nature and your questions are more daring and then, and then you start pouring your second glass of wine and a bottle of wine and your ideas go a little bit too far. So if you uh, have time today, go back home, pour yourself a glass of wine and then start thinking what you dream uh, in your work. But be careful and start after the first glass of wine. But the second comment and the second observation is <laughs> the second observation is really simple uh, because we have a different uh, culture in Poland of preparation of those grants. So usually the grants we receive uh, are really prepared, have been prepared in the very last moment. So we get them like one week before the deadline. So we cannot exploit all our possibilities of helping you. So if you want to uh, have a proper quality of your grants, follow me how. So start thinking about your grants earlier, consult it with your peers, consult it with mentors, and send, this to, send the proposals to our department and we will help you, but well in advance. And yeah, the second question. Uh, research questions. That is, I mean, I wanted to answer questions. And I knew that if I would be sitting on manuscripts, using manuscripts or editions, printed editions, it would take a lifetime until I answer these questions. And I and and I was at the beginning I was trying to answer this question with these things. Uh, I see I was sitting, I was like reading text for years and trying to find data and, I, and, and at a certain point I said, perhaps I drank a glass of wine. I said, and no, I no, I, I need to I need to find something completely different. I need a tool uh, and, and then comes the, came, came the idea of a digital da database, which is not going to be a control F database, but a different one. Because, for example, for my research questions, it was required, I, want to, I would like to know whether in all the 30 languages, uh, this suffix, for example, this, more, this part of a word, uh, exists, but in, in manuscripts stemming from this, from which period they stem, from which area they stem, in which uh, alphabet they are, are they written, who uh, I mean, uh, what what were the influences, etc., etc. And I, for example, I want to find uh, the answer whether whether <coughs> this and this suffix exist in a manuscript which is stemming from this area, and I can draw it in this area, uh, from a manuscript which is written in, for example, in Arabic or Hebrew script. And the letter Aleph or or is is this shape or this shape? So I, I needed a tool, and I said to myself, well, if I want to answer this question, I I would need a list of these things, but I will I will sooner die than I will find these things. I need some, and and, and I woke up and said, I think I'm in the 21st century. <laughs> so we have we have a possibility. So then I looked around, I sat down, I understood what I need. I understood that I am not in good in digital humanities. I started to read. I started to order books on Amazon and reading them, etc., etc. Understand what a, what digital uh, what the, what the digital era of, of editing uh, is about. So so I became like a self-grown expert. And then I approached somebody who, who has uh, been preparing something similar, but I mean not not, not that so so say ambitious. For the old Turkic text with the runic script, and I said to him, "Look, I will bring you materials and my knowledge and my ERC grant. Give me your, uh, I mean, join me and bring me your database, your idea, your your, your your capabilities, and let's let's join our forces." And that was the the, uh, the the result. And he said to me, "Yes, of course, we will do that." But we have to do it in a comparative way. So Karain, the language will be the first one, but we will, we will, be, we will create a comparative tool for all the Middle Turkic uh, materials, uh, started from the Mamluk Kipchak text, the Chaka text, etc. Et yes, of course, yes, yes. Mm, our, our idea now is even, even, even better with these additions. So, so, uh, so uh, I have seen just, uh, I have seen that there, is, there is, for example, a, a, an ERC grant. It is, I think, an advanced one. In, in Paris, led by Professor Alexander Bovin. Um, and he's writing a, an etymological dictionary of Japanese languages, or J Japanic languages. 
a, a bit different approach to Japanese and uh, to Ryukyuan dialects. And his project is about traditional historical linguistics. No flashing lights, no C3PO's R2D2's around. So it's like, and you can, he, he received funding for this project because he was, he is the only one in this earthly world who can do that. And probably if he passes away, there will be nobody else to do that for like for a century. So this is also an important question uh, that, that he is the one who should do this. Now is the time to do that, etc. And there are no, no, perhaps it would be somewhere in the internet, but that's not a novelty. That, that is done by everybody. So this, I think this, this addition of these, of these technologies is not a must. It's, it is something that helps you be innovative. But at the same time, it has to be an honest addition. Not, oh, I will scan manuscripts. That will be my novelty, or, and that will be on my laptop. <laughs> No, I mean it must come from your from your needs, from your re from your research objectives. I want to know this and this and this, and for this I'm creating a tool. Yeah. Um, I give a piece of advice: don't try such topics as Jan Kowalski, life and work. mathematician and economist. So uh, I have a problem because uh, I work on the frontier. You, you tell about frontier research. So I have a problem where, where to submit a, a, a proposal. If I want to use new mathematical t tools to solve mathematical uh, economic problems, or I want to uh, improve mathematical tools to solve those problems which cannot be solved because I use dynamic games which are uh, a tool which does, which is not very advanced, uh, and the question where to sub where to submit such a proposal to uh, this engineering, mathematical, and so on. Oh, it's even worse because I use it in ecological problems. Uh, so all of uh, three disciplines, that all all of all of, all, of, all the three panels uh, are represented in what I do. So here I, I have to declare to which panel I want to go. So that was. Can we ask? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yes. The, the, this is uh, this is a very relevant question because the, no matter how broad our panels are, the the science is difficult to be in close compartments. And the question that you have is a question that uh, many researchers have. I mean, if, if we were uh, uh, talking informally from what you are describing, I would say go to SH1. But, 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 but that, that is not the, 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 the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. the, 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 we, we are aware that these situations happen. So we have mechanisms established for interdisciplinarity, for cross-panel mm -hmm. projects being uh, uh, evaluated by the members in a panel with the addition of members uh, from other panels, right? And the, uh, we are actually uh, discussing among ourselves mechanisms to make uh, uh, these uh, dynamic elements in the compositions of the panels more prominent, more effective. But uh, in the current uh, organization, they are already present. And you will have to make a choice for sure that you can indicate in the interdisciplinarity and the panels can also accommodate uh, to these, uh, to these uh, cross panel components. Are there any other questions? Yes. But uh, I, I shall stand up and move because in order to think, I need to move as well. 
Um, my name is Renato Costro, and I am now from the <coughs> Catholic University of Lublin. I said now because, well, there is a lot of that demand. Because we have two spies, as you said, uh, from um, uh, ERC. <laughs> I would like to address you a very sincere question. Uh, can you enter as a private person? I will explain why. Um, uh, after educating and boosting human talent in my students who make careers all over the world, uh, right, four years ago, I thought, well, maybe it's time for myself. And to create and to, so to boost my own talent, not only other people's talent. So I went to Brussels um, to uh, a brokerage event with my own uh, project idea, also in the biblical studies, although I wasn't a biblical scholar at all. And I just wanted to test my idea. I met people who said, brilliant, fine, wonderful, just develop it. And finally, I had uh, an expert who was very truthful and sincere. Uh, I registered as a private person. I paid my own money. <laughs> I believe in myself in the project in the idea. And he said to me officially, you can apply as a private person, but never ever you will get <coughs> you will be accepted. So my question is, what is the truth? Uh, this is an extremely important question because I arrived from one university and I went to the Catholic University and at the age of as a retired woman, <laughs> uh, a glass of mature wine, I decided to take a PhD and I am a doctoral student in the middle of the road. Whenever I bring my ideas, I hear to grow for a doctorate. It's like a book. Uh, I bring projects, they say you cannot do it on your own. Uh, and so of course, there are people that be like myself, and I really remain humble, believe me. But there are people who never chose a mainstream academia, but doesn't matter. That doesn't mean they cannot think. They are not creative, they are not innovative. I'm looking into the six prophets <laughs> who were ordinary people, gifted, talented, and they changed the world. And where is the place for such people? Okay, so uh, to summarize, the question was uh, whether it is possible to apply for an ERC grant as a private tech, tech person which has not been associated with any research organization. So formally, I can say, of course, it is possible. It's in accord, full accord, accordance with the Horizon 2020 rules, but in practice, well, uh, maybe I would just, uh, we, we do not have, uh, as far as I, I know, that situation <coughs> within the ERC scheme. Um, and from practical, actually, point of view, uh, it is a risky approach uh, because you uh, are going to receive 1.5 million euro for your research. So you are not linked with any universities. I mean. Uh, then we do not have uh, a guarantee that you will manage management of those funds. So the feasibility of that approach is quite big. But the information which I want to provide you uh, is really optimistic because you don't have to be hired by any uh, institution with which you are going to apply. So if you have a brilliant idea and you know that there is a host institution who are not currently uh, employing you, but you work want to work for them, then simply go to the rector, go to the director, uh, ask them to prepare a host institution letter for you, so it's a kind of promise that you will be hired once getting the grant. But this institution doesn't have to be mainstream? It might be uh, an, uh, a private university, university private research organization. Uh, even enterprises uh, have been financed already by the research council. So find your perfect organization. Any research Any research. European research yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you are not also applying yeah. myself? Do I need to get a PhD? Uh, I mean, uh, 
formally uh, to apply for for the ERC advanced scheme, you don't have to have uh, the PhD. However, you have to prove that you are a prominent, renowned, uh, well-established researcher. It might be difficult without having a diploma. So, uh, the, uh, but on the other hand, people who um, have a PhD diploma uh, in the later phases of, of careers are not disqualified. If you have your diploma, wait two years and uh, submit your application, and your uh, experience, previous experience, can be also treated as an asset. So, uh, people from the ERC, they are really well um, uh, prepared to assess potential. These are the publications, just I treat them as a hobby. Yeah, yeah. so then, then we see but let's, let's come back to this discussion during the lunch break. I will uh, briefly uh, yes, show yes, you. Yes, are really smart. So. Yeah, <laughs> quite smart, quite intelligent. Uh, yeah, we have to say it. So do we have more questions? The last question. So the last question. Following what was said about the uh, cross title uh, type of research, uh, I was wondering if you could confirm because uh, on several occasions uh, I was uh, discouraged by colleagues who were much more experienced and actually finally they called the ERC grants. Uh, there was some kind of a word of mouth saying that better not to tick the second box because this may actually diminish your chances to get it uh, because of, uh, we will, there will be people from entirely different, you know, uh, kind of scientific milieu reviewing uh, and that, you know, they may, you may get a very contrasting opinion, so very conflicting reviews in that sense. Uh, is it really the, the case that, you know, your interdisciplinary may actually work against you uh, at the end? Yes, this is also a relevant question, and uh, it's one that has not a very straight answer, I'm afraid. Because uh, there would be word of mouth, because uh, we can look at correlation. I mean, we can look at uh, success rates uh, in, in proposals that uh, pick the second box and compare those with the ones that we, we know the correlation and causality that <coughs> matters, right? So um, whether uh, this is uh, driven by some other factors or by some special characteristics of the project that go in there or uh, whether that this is something more fundamental is difficult to establish. You want my opinion, I, I, I think there are some issues. The, 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 a member from a different panel that uh, brings a view at a particular, about a particular project that is not engaged with the evaluation of the group of projects that panel is dealing with. They may not uh, play the same role as the views of the others. I'm not saying that this is the case. I do not have evidence that this is the case. But I think about this. I see the dynamics of among panel members in the discussions about projects. If you are from another panel, you come to do this, then well, maybe there is a difference. The, but uh, my recommendation uh, could be to not to be strategic in this, uh, in this consideration. I mean, they think about the reality of your project. If the reality of your project is interdisciplinary to an extent that makes sense for the project to be evaluated in this way, go for this. Yeah, um, just add, add, add some. Yes, I mean, I had the same thought that perhaps I could be also uh, fitting there. But then I just simply sat, sat down and said to myself, I mean, well, I consider myself, or well, at least I would like to present myself as an expert in this um, uh, domain and I don't, I, well, you, you, you should not pretend that you are an expert in another domain. So where you really belong, there you should be.
So you you shall want to compete with with uh, with those who are experts in your domain because you will be answering for questions from your domain. In my particular case, somebody advised me advised me that to that there was SH six. I think it was like saving cultural heritage or something. It would be like. Hmm? But my primary aim is to. Uh, I'm a historical linguist. Not, not I'm not documenting. I mean, I'm not not a. Um, language documentation uh, specialist. Well, I, I went to it, I thought, I mean, and, and then I checked how much the methodology of linguistic documentation evolved in the course of time, how, how much literature I would need, be needing to read, to be an expert in that domain. So I said, no, I will be just simply honest with myself and with the others that I, I am this panel, and I am offering something which is also good for, for some other reasons. But that's also, that's, that's, an out, that's a side effect that I am like, Helping to preserve culture or deliver something, but that's not my aim. So some new ideas are created at the intersection of different disciplines, but it's a challenge to write a good proposal to convince experts uh, in in several areas. But when we look at statistics, more more and more people tick more boxes. Uh, so so yeah, it's a challenge. But we, we, we cannot play too much yeah, with it. Just submit, just put the names of panels that you think are relevant, uh, and that's it. And yeah. please remember one detail, but it might be quite important, that the final allocation to a panel uh, relies on the chair of a panel. So if the chair uh, makes a decision that your project doesn't fit to that panel, your project can be given to another uh, panel or a help, an assistant from all yeah, but, 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 but if you do that and your proposal is moved to some other panel, that happens. Okay. Uh, your chances are lower because you are writing your proposal for a given set of people for a given panel. And if it is moved, it's not written exactly towards those people. So, so, so it's better to write, uh, yeah, to, to, to stay in this panel, but you know. So playing games with panel members, that doesn't fail. Yeah, and the last question. It's moving between panels, uh, it's uh, only within panel uh, humanities and, so, and social arts, no. or between it panels? Be can not necessarily, it can be. Not necessarily. You can be across domain in this portion. Uh, I can say that as in the scientific cases we are working, but this is an early stage of work, uh, about a very different scheme, so no panels at all. You simply submit your proposal, you are saying it, if it is social sciences, humanities, life sciences, phys physical sciences, engineering, you just submit your proposal. Then there is, the proposal is read automatically, we use some artificial intelligence tools that pick up keywords and then dynamically define panels to those proposals. Uh, we, we tested that approach. It works. There's, there are some weak points. One weak point is that we have to invite our experts to panels, uh, say two years in advance. Yeah? These are very busy people. So, and to, we, we don't know which panels could be created yeah, by artificial intelligence, so this is a weak point. So we are thinking, if you have a, any bright idea, just submit a proposal. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so I think that we will uh, stop it close our uh, our